Welcome to Studio Chatter. Look at us. We're back in the studio together. Yay! Yay. We'll talk about the need to listen to everyone, regardless of our opinions. We'll learn more about Griffles Biomat is helping in the fight against the virus. And with school being out, we'll talk about a screen-free summer. We've got lots to talk about coming up on Studio Chatter. Welcome to Studio Chatter. You should have heard producer Pete yell when he twisted his arm, virtually of course, to let us come back to the studio. So his punishment to us is to give us circus colors. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but where are the circus cookies? They're yeah, brilliant. Pete. We don't yeah. see those. It's, it's so very, good to be it's back. very colorful though. It is guys. colorful. Yeah, it is. It is wow. good to be back, ladies. It feels good. I miss you guys. I miss like you. Like in too. real life. Yeah. So, I, I, no, I miss you totally. I'm just, I'm trying to convey my thoughts here. It's interesting because now that you can actually go somewhere, there's, it seems like there's so much involved, right? So now yes. you have to get ready. You have to allow time in the car. Oh, getting you have ready to make, is a bad one. You have to make sure that everybody's fed or, I mean, there's just so many yeah. things. It's, it's wonderful. It's wonderful to have people, but it's, it's really kind of interesting when you get used to your cave environment. Right. And you're like, oh, I just have to go to a Zoom. I just have to do this. And it's walking to... The kitchen. Right. And back to just in and out. Family room. <laughs> <laughs> well, washing hair and doing makeup. Like, I, oh. really, I really am one that will not go out in public if my makeup's not on. That standard is like out the window now. I am going <laughs> everywhere and I'm like, I don't, I don't care anymore. I know, why is that like standard? It's like just because Corona hit, we don't have to do put on sweats. We just well, don't wear makeup. Yeah. I don't know. Wash our just, hair twice a week. Which is kind of refreshing though. Yeah. It did like, uh -huh. okay, relax. Yeah. And even like with some of our celebrations and events, for some reason, like because we couldn't have multiple peoples, mm -hmm. then we like tamper down uh -huh. like how much we expected from ourselves. So at the you event. had a baby blessing this week. We so did. is that what you're referencing? Yeah. So that's the first time we kind of decorated, but me and Mallory and the girls were talking about getting ready for it. And before it's like we were so anxious to have it perfect per se mm -hmm. or just mm -hmm. more. Mm -hmm. And it was like just bringing it down a notch and it felt good. And it's like, maybe this can become a new norm. I feel like expectations with everything are just oh, lower now. Yes. Totally. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that feels good. It does feel it good. It really does. It's both. I think it's both because you really don't expect that out of yourself, out of others. But it's really nice also because then you feel like you're really kind of dressing up to go somewhere. Yeah. Or even if it's indoors, if it's an indoor baby blessing or if it's just a very small wedding celebration, maybe the days will come back when it was nice to dress up to go to the theater or nice to dress up to go to the wedding reception. Yeah. So maybe we'll see kind of that revival. Who knows? It does feel good to get dressed up. It does. I love it. Yeah. I love it to get dressed up. It felt good tonight to get dressed up. But it does feel good to just Because even at sweats. work, like I'm kind of dressing up, but not really. We're kind of like in the same basic mm -hmm. uniform and... Uh -huh. And some days I'm doing, like they told us that we don't need to wear makeup. Like they've kind of requested that from the girls in the back because their mm -hmm. um, masks like oh. can't get the germs and like the toxins on mm -hmm. it from okay. the makeup. And so, but up front we're a little bit more. So okay. I haven't really been dressing up for work either. And I was like, okay, my expectations are really myself low. are really going down. Well, I've noticed with the masks even, especially now that it's getting warmer weather, because I, I really try to practice wearing my mask when I'm going into the grocery store or to an, a bigger area. And it's hot and it's like, it's rubbing off. So it's almost not even worth it. Kids, I am breaking yeah. out because of oh, the mask totally. on my face yeah. all day. And mm -hmm. I can just Do you have feel. to wear it all day? At the front desk, kind of, you do, huh? Yeah, kind of. It's a choice, a personal choice, of course, but we are kind of requiring it. Them. It's interesting as we're back out. I had to take my car into the shop and it says, wear your mask, you know, and wash your hands on the mm -hmm, sign. Mm -hmm. So I go in and all of the employees are wearing the masks, but none of the people that are just coming to have their car right. service are. And so mm -hmm. I went in and I said, do, you, do I need to wear a mask? Mm -hmm. And she said, oh, it's up to you. Right. So I think legally people have to say, like, wear a mask maybe. Mm -hmm. Yes. But mm -hmm. you don't. And I wonder how much of all of this is truly for show. Yes. 
Right. No, I mm. I wonder that as well. Or if the unknown, like for me, wearing it is kind of to protect myself a little bit too, because now that we're ushering in more right. patients or people, sure. I'm not quite sure how careful they're being. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like I'm almost feeling like I need to protect myself even more now. But a mask is, we're told that that's not to protect ourselves, mm -mm. that's to, to mm -hmm. protect others. Mm -hmm. Right. But if they're not wearing it, then that's the thing that I can do to protect myself. But that's what I'm saying. Right. They say it doesn't. <laughs> right, which I don't know. Obviously, <laughs> the, obviously the breakout on my chin is not protecting me, guys. It's out of love for everyone oh, else, right? It is. So, I, mean, I, I do I, love I think them. That, yeah. That's kind of, you know, when I'm telling my own family, oh, please, you know, just wear them if you're going into a bigger area. I mean, and we've really tried to not take the littles into bigger areas because they have a tendency to kind of touch everything. So, yeah. you know, they... <laughs> See with their hands, so no touch, no touch, or you know, and wearing the mask that's like clear up under their <laughs> eyes or something, and so you know they don't love wearing it anyway. So it's just, I guess it's the the unknown for for us. Right. It's yeah. kind of like, you know, I think you hear about may, what may be coming in the fall, or if there's not a vaccination or vaccine or whatever it could be. I think it's. Just I think this transition zone, period yeah. is almost trickier than when we it engaged is. all the way. I would it's agree. like, how far do you pull back? How far do you jump in? Yes. But it, it it's all up to us. It is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's, <laughs> it's so hard, I think. It is. It's really hard to determine like At, what's enough. And, and Costco, what's not. you have to wear a mask, but then you go and you see people and it's hard to talk to people with a mask. I noticed that when I stopped to talk to people, we would kind of pull our mask yes. down. Mm -hmm. to really communicate and not recognizing yeah. and you're people them as well right. more yeah. right well i think well I, I guess the other thing for me personally is that i i speak a lot to individuals in other states so then when you kind of hear those stories and how it's affecting them mm. and and the deaths and just coming back from recuperation you're like oh okay i get it now i get it so maybe it won't make its way that you know that far in or yeah. it's just, I guess it's just that trickle effect. I'm, I'm not sure. It's so maybe, interesting. So maybe hearing the stories that we actually know people that died, I'm actually back from 20 days of recuperation. Then you're like, oh, maybe I'll think twice. Maybe you're talking Because I think a lot people. of people mm -hmm. think right now maybe it's faux or facade. Because yeah. I've heard a lot of people say, do you know anyone who's had it, I, you know? Mm -hmm. And so it's like, well, the facts are there, but no, I personally don't have mm -hmm. anyone. Right. So we're just trusting in. The numbers that are coming I know through. it's tricky I almost think that going forward is going to be messier than what we just got Probably. out of it. really 100%. well and even some of the bigger corporations that you've named also I think a lot of that starts at really top tier headquarters yeah. where they might be based and how it's affecting that entirety so they have to set a standard for their yes. whole company so when you're on the clock you must wear a mask when you're not on the clock then the decisions right kind of and in different areas choice. of the country it is worse so I sure. think that they do have to do that it's like the LDS church in a whole, they're Has all around it, the world, yeah. so they have to make one decision yeah. for the whole. You guys, okay. were we even going to well, talk about well, this? we're in yellow. We're not, oh. actually. We, oh we are going to move on, or we can come back to that later. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> it looks gorgeous, though. <laughs> Next on Studio Chatter with Summer coming up, can you turn off the devices? Stay with us. Welcome back to Studio Chatter. We have all become so connected to our devices over the last few months. Can we even consider going tech-free this summer? Let's welcome Jen Sitterud to the program. Her family went device-free last year and has some fabulous ideas to share with us. Welcome, Thank Jen. You, welcome guys. back, rather. Thank you. Yes, two times. It's and I wasn't here you. last time, so I I'm super know. excited to be able to get to know you better. Yes. Yeah. And we're talking screen-free. That panics right. me. Yeah. Right. That panics every part of me. A lot of me. moms, when they hear we go screen free, they're like, how do you do it? Well, but I think especially now, yeah. because yes. I think this is going to probably be for you a big, yeah. uh, more harder. of a switch yeah. This, yeah. this year. Yeah. Because we've been so technology driven with homeschooling. Where's your Chromebook? And find this. And everything is, you know, Seesaw or iRed or iReady rather, what, whatever yeah. program they're using. So. Yeah. All of a sudden, it's all, and then are you going to transition? I feel like I call it like a detox. Oh, so actually, I like it. actually, I like a couple it. weeks ago, we okay. did kind of a screen-free week. 
hmm. just to kind of prepare them for screen free summer. For so what does that summer? look yeah. like? Screen free, so, like is it all the way? Or? No, so it's not a hundred percent screen free. Okay. So um, we kind of have an outline, like for the summertime, but for like a screen free week, we go Monday through Friday, um, and if they do like screen free, they're they're outside playing. Then Friday night we call it free day, so they'll get to watch a movie and kind of get to have their free time, uh -huh. and also on the weekends, I guess Friday night and Saturday. So okay. So does that mean? Them. I mean, like of course you have to text and email and stuff so yes. that's not part of the no. screen free it's like the gaming and yes and the tv the, searching. the computer yeah okay. all the tablets the laptops that kind of stuff okay yeah all right so how, remind us jen how old are your kids mm. yes. so my oldest is 13 i have a 13 year old 11 year old nine seven and four okay and out of those kids who has their own phone so my oldest just barely got his Okay. Wow. Barely got a phone. So, so it this might will be, be a little, little harder. Tricky. Because yes. in the past, they probably weren't texting. No, no, nobody no. had phones, so it was easier, I feel like. It was okay. easier yeah, right. to, you know, have a screen free. So, I have my little grandbabies that are two and three, and they are like magicians on those phones, guys. Are they? They can, like, look and see the slime and, like, oh, I like that slime over up. Like, yes, it is amazing so how quick yeah. that they can. Yeah. yeah. So on, are you screen free during this yes. time too? So okay. So I feel like if my kids are going to do it, I need to do it as well. So yeah. Okay. I, I want to ask. Yes. Let's say the kids are all in bed. Yeah. It's summer, so it's 10:30. Yeah. And are you really gonna like just go sneak <laughs> your phone and just hop on Stacey, Instagram? Stacey, you're so mean. I, <laughs> honestly, I, you, know, you know what? You know I know this, really, right? Yeah. <laughs> I have to delete online. it from my phone. So I delete it. The app. Okay. Okay. Well, okay. especially in the summertime. I will just delete it so it's, there's no temptation. Okay, but you're a blogger. <laughs> right. And I just started that, so I don't know this. Well, for the summer, I'm like. So you have to turn on to do that, yes. right? So I think for so our Friday free day, I will turn it on. And, and you'll do your Instagramming? Yeah, catch up a little and bit. And have you started your blog? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Slowly right. but surely. Okay, so and yeah. I'll, I will also have a, a free printable like next week sometime oh, on the perfect. blog kind of an outline of how we do it in the okay. summer because mm -hmm. we'll go we have themes from Monday through Saturday kind of a theme throughout the um, for every day so they can kind of okay remind us your blog it's tutusandjerseys.com yeah oh, that's that. so cute Thank love that and I will miss you if you're not on Instagram because your posts are so much fun you're so sweet Thank well, you could just do a multiple she could so do a multiple fun. posts yeah, it on might, Fridays it might something. get a little crazy on Friday uh -huh. we'll be like 20 posts, posts from mm -hmm. Jen oh my gosh <laughs> So I have a couple of questions. So for yeah. the 13-year-old that just yeah. got the phone, are we talking like smartphone or flip yeah. phone? So he, yeah, okay. he got a smartphone. He's okay. going to be 14 next month, so. And uh, do you have kind of screen time or supervision on there? Yeah, How so, are you monitoring yeah. them? We, um, I think it's like the family sharing on the iPhone, and we okay. can limit the time he's on, you know, games or whatever. Okay. So that's kind of what we And do you turn them off so at night or anything? Yeah. Okay. So we'll have like, turn it off at like 9, 10 until the morning time. Okay. So, and he and he puts it in our room at nighttime. I like that. He'll come and charge. That is incredible. Room. So you must so. just have like they must have the utmost respect <laughs> for you. So how <laughs> like how do you get how do you demand that almost? I and I feel like cuz we started years ago mm -hmm. and they were still pretty young. Yeah. So yeah. now they're like in the habit of it. Right. So it's nothing it's new to them or no. hard to maybe give up because that's yeah. all that they know. So our know. viewers that have teenagers, don't even start this because you're going to get <laughs> no. some major pushback. <laughs> 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 that's a negative for some well, teenagers. No, I, but I wonder so. about like outside influence though because yeah. certainly, I mean, you, you can take that out of their lives but into their lives, I mean, that you wouldn't get like the pushback. Well, I mean, even for my nine-year-old, well, so-and-so is doing this TikTok, which, you know, we didn't have no TikTok, totally. but she still is, you know, picking yeah. up on the moves down the street. Yes. So, I yeah. mean, yeah. and it is hard. It is hard to limit that when they go to friend's house, you know. Mm -hmm. The first, like, year I was like, okay, try not to do it, you know, watch screens at friend's house, but it's it's hard to do that, and it was becoming too stressful. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, then it's not shaming, but they're over there, I can't do that. I can't and do then, this. Yeah. Yes. And, and, and you don't want to them to kids. feel bad, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And and screens are great. Like right. there there are in our kids like it's their thing. Right. There's there's so much good with technology, but I feel like our kids and their developing brains they need brain breaks. That's they need we, interaction with people too though. Yeah. Cuz yeah. I have noticed that like we went to a party last night 
and there were several people sitting around all like this and so many people doing this and someone was talking, uh huh, uh huh. Mm -hmm. yes. You're and kidding. Yes. And it's like you're really not fully engaged in that person. No. And I noticed yeah. a few people telling a story and then someone would look at their phone and that person telling the story almost like shut down a little bit. Like, is anyone really listening to uh -huh. me? Mm -hmm. yeah. And mm -hmm. I thought there's a portion of that that's kind of rude mm -hmm. too. Yeah. So I'm within people. I got to learn to control yeah. myself. I agree. And I feel like too with kids, that's kind of why I started too because... I mean, my kids have heard this so many times from me. When I was young, right. we <laughs> played outside and we were creative. And my kids will even yeah. um, comment that they get along better, that they are more creative. They love screen time. So they get it. They get it now. Yeah. I mean, obviously, they're going to complain. And I tell people when we start our screen-free summers, get through that first week. It's mm -hmm. like everyone's kind of getting out of those bad habits. Like, get through that first week yeah. of the detox. Right. And it is awesome. Like, it really is. I, I like do it. notice that I like though. It. I do when too. you when you start removing the technology from the equation, yeah. they do seem to become more creative. Can we build a fort? Can we, yeah. you know, uh -huh. color? Can we paint? Can we? Then they start being a little more innovative to come up with ideas of their own. Absolutely. Because, I'm, I mean, I fail as a parent with with the technology sometimes because it's sometimes it's easier to be like, yeah. here, here, go, like, it keep is. yourself Absolutely. busy for a minute. Yeah. Or I don't want to clean up the volcano explosion right this right. moment. Yep. So. I mean, you, you, I mean, kudos to you because you have to be super, super yeah. engaged with them as well. Absolutely. And mm -hmm. Well, and that's why we kind of came up with a theme kind of for the summers. Mm -hmm. So on Mondays, it's make something Monday. So they have to make something, whether it's cookies oh, or Play Doh. Yes. And okay. then Tuesday, it's take a trip Tuesday. So we'll take a trip on Tuesday, oh, okay. Wednesday. So there's kind of a theme. Throughout, so keep telling us more. Wednesday, yes. Yes. remember? Yes, yes. Like, I know. Know. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So on Wednesdays, it's um, Wet and Wild Wednesday, okay. and that is their favorite. Yeah, of course. So <laughs> it's turn on the sprinklers or get go the to the pool. Slide. Yeah, go to the swimming okay. pool. Their favorite though is shaving cream. So I'll go to the dollar store and get lots of cans of shaving cream, and they will just drench themselves in oh, shaving cream, like really? shaving cream wars, and then they'll run through the sprinklers. So it oh, is. Who would have ever thought of that? And you're like, thank you, stars, because you all smell like barbasol. Oh, yeah, for real. <laughs> and they're entertained for hours. Like, uh -huh. it is so oh, awesome. Oh, wow. And then Thursday, it's Thinking Thursday. So oh. they need to do something thinking. We'll go to the library. Dive or, into a book. Yes. yes oh, books. Yeah. They'll do science experiments. So just something thinking. Mm -hmm. And then Friday is free day. So... That's when they can. Out they Friday can watch late a movie. Afternoon. Okay. It's like they screens are on. We have pizza on Friday night, so okay. and it's movie. So you said if they've earned it yeah. by Friday night. Yeah. If they haven't earned it, give us an example of some mishaps during a week. What they so could then look they'll like. have, they won't get as much time. And now they really like I said, they're kind of in the habit. Okay. So they're pretty. Yeah. They're they kind of know the drill. I love this. So before we wrap up, then. On, fr on Fridays then, has in the pattern or over the past that you've done this, have you noticed at all that when it comes around to Friday that they have either, I mean, are they ready for screen time or do they sometimes like, yeah, we haven't had it and don't miss it? Um, kind of both. Like it kind of depends on each kid too. Some mm -hmm. are like, oh, we got to get on those screens. <laughs> we can't wait. And others are like, I'm going to play a little bit more. So it kind of depends on, I think, the kid. Okay. So I kind of see both. Oh, that's awesome. Jen, good luck. Yes. I think, I, I want to add though, I think this summer is probably going to be the most important to summer yeah. to pull I away agree. from this. Like the hardest we've maybe, been but most so, important. Yeah, attached. And that's exactly, we, it's, yes. To it's good to pull away. Yeah. All right, well, Thanks, fantastic. Jen. Thank you oh, for good sharing. Luck. Awesome, thank you. Coming up next, we'll be talking with a local company that is helping to be a part of the solution. Stay with us for more Studio Chatter. Welcome back to Studio Chatter. You may know that a lot of people see Griffles Biomat as a way to make some side cash, but did you know that they're working on finding solutions to the coronavirus? Say hello to Jesse Carden, the general manager of Griffles Biomat in Spanish Fork. Hi. Welcome Hi. back. Hey, Welcome. Thanks for having me, guys. Wow. You're busy. <laughs> <laughs> You're busy. You slowed down for a minute. Yeah. Did you have to shut down? No, we so we haven't had to shut down. Oh, at okay. all. really? Uh, How did you transition that? Uh, quickly. Okay. Uh, we, uh, you know, we went to half capacity okay. essentially. 
Um, just making sure that we're creating an environment that's socially distanced, whether that's in our lobby or where people are donating, or our donors are donating, and then also okay. trying to keep our staff safe because they are, there are a lot of them, mm -hmm. but they have to, and they have to work in close proximities in a, in a roundabout way, right? Like right. They, they are, you know, in and out of the center a lot, and so we're, you know, we're doing temperature checks. We have face masks being worn throughout, okay. PPE being th worn throughout. Our donors are being temperature checked before they come in the center. Okay. Um, those type of things. Yeah. What are your hours, Jesse? Uh, so they are five to eight thirty Monday. Five a.m. Five a.m. <laughs> to eight thirty uh, Monday through Thursday. Yeah. Five a.m. Wow, to seven early. on Friday, and then we are open on Saturdays from six a.m. till two thirty. Okay. So are you typically just seeing any of those that had donated previous or are you accepting new donors or why is this so imperative right now? So yes to both of those okay. uh, questions. Uh, there are people who rely on plasma all the time mm -hmm. to be able to live. And so if we stop, they don't get the medications that they need. And so it's important that we stay going mm -hmm. so that they're getting mm -hmm. those, right. those medications. We are taking new donors as well. Okay. Um, but on top of that, um, Plasma, you've heard it in the news a little bit. Mm -hmm. Convalescent plasma is something that Griffles is trying to use to, we're taking donors who have tested positive in the past for COVID-19 and then have recovered. Mm -hmm. And then they're able to donate their antibodies to their plasma and then we're able to create a medication from that plasma. Um, that it's gonna take quite a few donations to make one medication. So we need those donors oh. coming in and we, uh, there's a lot of studies going on. Griffles was one of the companies that was selected by the FDA to do this. Wow. Um, and so that's happening here in Spanish Fork um, just starting recently. So. Wow. So yeah. is that like to create the vaccine? Is that what we're talking? So or a little bit a different. different. Okay. Yeah. So more of a treatment than a vaccine. Okay. So if somebody comes up sick, they would be able to use this. Um, you've heard like uh, some actors, some famous people donating mm -hmm. their plasma yeah. to give to it. Uh, this is a more hyperimmune, or so they're taking a lot more of the antibodies um, from multiple sources, creating a, a, high, a more intensive uh, medication that they can give to the donor or to the patients. I'm sorry that are that are dealing with this disease to help get and them hopefully better to faster, get them better maybe. faster. Yeah. Okay. I remember your ribbon cutting. Was it? Remind me. Was it? In August, two summers ago? Yeah, August 2018. So you're almost to your two-year mark. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And we had a guest speaker that day, and he was saying how much he depends on plasma donations yeah. for his daily... What? Yeah, yeah. He, he had, um, or he used antitrypsin was the name of the, the medication okay. he would use. Um, and it takes over 900 donations okay, to keep him alive, or to wow. keep him healthy for in one year. So 900 people. Mm-hmm save his life yeah. every year that's like that story just touched me I, well and weren't you telling us a story previously before screen that someone was given some blood to help them recover from something yeah up in murray i heard this you yeah is so, this a true story so yeah they there's there's lots of stories that you're starting to hear where they're okay. giving the plasma or blood to patients that have had um the covid 19 or okay. coronavirus and that's been showing a positive effect right. on their treatment. Wow. And that's why there's a lot of hope and, and desire in doing this, um, what we're calling CC19, in order to hopefully get them better quicker, have the medication that doctors can have in their hands that they can give to patients as they're dealing with this unfortunate okay. event. So I have a, I don't want it to be an insensitive question, <laughs> but it's in my mind. Do they get more money than their regular donor, or yes. is it the same? Yes. Okay. okay. Yeah, and so like uh, Griffles, we have other programs throughout the country, such as tetanus or uh, mm. hepatitis um, programs. Oh. Um, we have just different uh, programs where we can collect plasma that's specialized, oh. and those donors do get a little bit more money okay. because their plasma is needed a little bit more, actually a lot bit more. Okay, so, that yeah. makes so much sense. And yeah. I have a personal question as well. So I have multiple sclerosis and I remember years back I went yeah. in to donate and they filled out all my paperwork and then they came to me and asked me about my disease and it wasn't at right. your place. But um, And then they said, we just don't know much about this that we can't right. accept you as a donor. Mm -hmm. I just wonder if things have changed since then or so, how that goes. So it's a little bit of a loaded question. Okay, about, right, right. Want, of course, what, it's individual. Uh, <laughs> <but>. So uh, <laughs> we have medical staff at every site. Um, at our center, we have a lot of medical staff there at mm -hmm. all times mm -hmm. taking our new donors. 
but then also just making sure that our donors are safe to give the plasma because right. the first thing that's the most important is that you're safe to donate that plasma because some of us we need the plasma yeah and, and my health probably needed it more, more right but i think yeah. it was the unsurety of it yeah. can i or not yeah so is my they, blood uh, healthy enough or it's not? It's pretty defined at this point. So you'd come in, you'd do a physical, you'd sit down with one of our medical staff and they would ask you some questions. Some of those medical type of things like mm -hmm. multiple sclerosis, they would ask you about and then you would tell them and then they would look in this book that we have, our SOP that tells mm -hmm. them whether or not you can donate. And then we also have doctors that we report to that if for some reason we can't tell you one way or another, they can. And so they're mm -hmm. always on call like 24 seven. So. Awesome. That makes it. Well, that's yeah. fantastic cool. because you certainly can't know everything, and you can't right. know everyone's. Yeah. You know, even even if you took someone's temperature today and they seem just fine, they and could right. be asymptomatic. You can't know possibly everything, right. even with all of the history. So, now I think it's just a marvelous work that you do, that the donors do, that it's obviously so needed, and I think that the the money is just an extra incentive yeah. or perk to maybe. And yeah, people, people yeah, right. to do it a little yeah. bit more. And that's what we hear. We hear Spanish Fork has been such a wonderful town, not only because I live here, but yeah. because I see what people are doing. They come in because, yeah, there is a little bit of extra cash, but they keep coming because they feel the good that it's doing. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Because so it is taking time out of their week, isn't it? Yeah. Usually you can come in twice a week and you're there for about an hour and a half. Yeah, so our, our average times at our center, time you walk in, time you walk out is about 80, 82 minutes okay. um, after your first time. Your first time does take a little bit longer because of that, you know, that medical screening, history and yeah, screening yeah. that you have right. to go through. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it takes a little bit of extra time and it is needed so direly across the world that it's important that we're that we're getting people in twice a week if we can. Yeah, I appreciate you sharing your message. We need to have yeah. you back here to remind yeah, our viewers like this is crucial and and I know I gave plasma like 20 years ago. I think you kind of ebb and ebb and flow in life where it's a convenient time or maybe a, some extra income so maybe someone can go in and get there's just always different right. reasons to right. go do it. Right. So well I think I know somebody probably sitting in your center right now that has some extra time and and likes to donate so perfect <laughs> That's awesome. and, and I think it's important I want to share just the website because of the yes. CC 19 yes. is a little bit new um, there's a website that people can go to it's grifflesplasma.com okay dash or slash sorry en slash end and cv19 so end cv19 okay. um, just to see if you're able to donate um, mm -hmm. with the new program that's going on okay. if not you can still do we still need regular plasma, right. but I know a lot of people are interested in what's going on with the COVID response right now. That's great. Awesome. That's really awesome. Thank, Thank you Jesse. so much. We'll share that information as well. Thank you. Okay. Next on Studio Chatter, the governor has spoken. That's coming right up. Welcome back to Studio Chatter. The governor has moved the state from a moderate risk status to low risk. What does it mean for us to be in the yellow now? What have you learned over the last few months? Ooh, that's a good one. I know, guys, that um, really is. What does it mean to be yellow? For me, I feel like orange to yellow really didn't change that much. Mm -hmm. I really did. I feel like when we went from red to orange, mm -hmm. That was the biggest step, and I think people kind of went from red to green. Mm -hmm. Don't you feel like in all different levels a little mm -hmm. bit? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm one of those that is cautiously optimistic. So we kind of have left things the same. Mm -hmm. um, still not really taking the kids out. They're, they're playing in the neighborhood. I still try to wear the mask in, in bigger public ven mm -hmm, venues mm -hmm. and places and, and supermarkets and such. Um, I don't know. It, I mean... I kind of want it to slow back down again and to go back. Is that a funny thing? It feels like it got really fast. It just like, felt like, like we really bumped back all of a sudden. Yeah, mm -hmm. to from, went real from life. orange to yellow. Yeah. I think there are very few changes on that um, Utah 2.0. Right. Like when you read it, there's just a couple little shifts, right. but mm -hmm. going from 20 to 50. Yeah. That's like, okay, now you don't have to have drive-by birthday parties, baby showers, mm -hmm. right. wedding. You can just right. make sure, you know, baseball games, parks are back open. Mm -hmm. it, do, it, it opens up. 
It mm -hmm. does. It makes so. this, I mean, I felt like I've been busy this whole time in different aspects right. of my mm -hmm. life. Like, I didn't really slow down at work or anything. But I feel like this just sped us back up again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, now we can be together and do more and more. And I had spoke about how we had a baby blessing last night. And it was a little bit bigger group, but still small and intimate. And that feeling of just like... I don't know, that small intimacy was really nice, and so mm -hmm. I kind of don't want to go super big. Mm -hmm. I kind of want to keep it a little bit small. Well, you asked us simpler. what we learned. Uh -huh. And I think for me, like I, I knew I was a social person, but I also like my individual time. Yeah. Like I, I need like just my time to either read or, or just be alone, and I, I noticed that my drive commuting, that's sometimes where I got it. Mm -hmm. So when you are with your family all the time and everybody's at home, right. Like, I, I like to talk to other people and be with other people, but mm -hmm. then I also like just that time that alone. decompression, yeah. kind of alone and, time. And we only have four of us at home, and everyone's adults, so I can't even imagine. Mm. No, I totally Having agree. Having gobs of people I, yeah, I've home. made the joke yeah. with, my, with my mom even. I've said, I've been quarantining my whole life because I'm an only, yes. so I'm I'm perfectly fine. In fact, I prefer to be alone sometimes. I do so too. I totally, too. I totally need that space yeah. too. I'm like, if you want me to be nice, then. Just but it, it. it seems like so, such an extreme because I'm so social and an extrovert, and I love that. But, but then I'm I, a true introvert. Like I, I totally. I think want I refresh off of my introvert moments. Yes, so I do like the yep, social that's aspect where I, when I'm ready and when I need it. But that's where I find like my joy is being yes. with other yeah. people. Mm -hmm. that's and true. so it's But my it's downtime weird. and refresh time comes from being alone. And I like the stimulation of other people. Yeah. Right. Like when you're with mm -hmm. your same people, it's kind of the same conversation and then tomorrow night you're or same last night thing, you're right. dinner again and well, we saw each other all day, so now what do you talk about? Mm -hmm. And this morning I was walking the trail and walked by someone in my neighborhood and so I'm like, Oh, well, well walk back together. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what a stimulating conversation right. we just had. Mm -hmm. It makes you kind of feel like, what's retirement going to look like? Like, <laughs> we've got to do activities and yeah. find some interactions together. Same repetitive kind of conversation. Right, right, right. You need to keep up But you know what? It's really made me be so grateful for my family. Even spending all yeah. that extra time together, uh -huh. just being able to just focus on us and not everything else that comes around and yeah, parties and gatherings nice. and different things. It was really nice to reconnect in like a deeper way and realize that's kind of the importance yeah. of my world is that. Yeah. So what about going out to eat? Have you been inside yeah, a no. dining? You have been inside. Okay. You guys haven't? No. How? How, how? No, in Salt Lake, we were shopping for a wedding dress for my future daughter-in-law oh. and it was lunchtime and we, we stopped in and ate, and that was just felt so good. And, and did then, they have you like spaced around? Yep. Or? And then we went to Chili's recently on a date with our friends, and there was like an X on every other table. Okay. And I thought, geez, the line's going to be long, but it was still curbside pickup was still hopping. Yeah. But then the restaurant was just, it was nice because it gets so loud in restaurants. Uh -huh. Right. And it wasn't. Yeah, I'm not. Yes, really I'm, still, I'm still at curbside level. Yes, me too. Oh, or I am. Level. <laughs> Real, uh, no, yeah. I am. Like I need a in transition in there, but yeah. So, I do, would you yet. feel comfortable going in? I think that I would, depending on the restaurant. Oh, okay. but I'm just not quite and you're ready not to quite jump there. in. Well, I don't know. I, I mean, I think that maybe two adults, maybe that we. You know, my husband and I that we could try yeah. that first. I don't know if I'd like taken the, the kids, kids yet. You know, they, who knows what they would be touching or yeah, <laughs> jumping. Right. No, so, and it was kind of refreshing seeing them clean mm -hmm. the tables after people left. I kind of thought that that hasn't happened previously. That right? needs to stay forever. Like right, wipe right. down the seats. I've never seen someone really wipe down the right. seats and the table and right. tables. But it, it was really should. nice. I even, think that is going to change pain. from now on, like yeah. our hand washing, sanitizing, like I have little wipes in my car now that when I like buy my Diet Coke or whatever, like I'm washing off my debit card before I put it back in my wallet. Just oh, different you guys are good. With the little spritzer. Yep. Yes. I t <laughs> so what is this spritzer? So this is just the Bath and Body Works anti-back And you spritz. got one from Bath it's and Body. It's a spritz? Right, it is Okay, what do your table decors? Pete said, hey, we're on separate tables tonight. What What is yours represent? Okay, super quickly because we're out of time. Okay. Mine is just really, I just brought my home office to here because okay. this is what, like, pretty much the same for me. Okay, <laughs> I love the glasses. <laughs> okay. And? Um, I've been doing a little bit of gardening, and this one just makes me happy. It's That's just so simple, pretty. but yeah, it's beautiful. Pretty. Yeah. Good, good. It makes me happy. I what brought this you? because I've been reading and baking. Very and good. And chocolate. Good job, yeah. Steve. So, and we're out of time. Oh, out of time. <laughs> I love it.
<laughs> Perfect. <laughs> it seems we all need a dose of faith about now. We'll talk about that next on Studio Chatter. Welcome back to The Chatter. The band named War had a big hit in 1975 with advice we all need right now. They sing, Why Can't We Be Friends? Let's welcome Pastor Stephen Martins from the Faith Baptist Church of Utah Valley to our tables. Welcome, Pastor Steve. Thank you. Hello. Thank you so much for having me. Welcome. Thank you. It's good to be here. So, in these trying times, mm -hmm. people will often look to their faith for hope or questions or seeking ad advice. How is that looking for your congregation? Well, there's there's hope for everybody mm -hmm. because the, the Bible tells us that the rain falls on the just and the unjust. It's not just hard times for those who are maybe struggling more than others. Everyone is in need of hope. And even in the book of Proverbs, it talks about those who think there's a lion without, so they stay within because of fear that grips them. And with Jesus, he gives us hope because he brings true hope, not just in an, a bag of goodies, of not in a, a method or a mantra, but in the person of Jesus Christ. And I'm so happy to have hope that is real and that is lasting. Mm -hmm. And many people have been very encouraged even through this storm. I've been mm -hmm. calling it a storm or a season because they have been able to find in the midst of the storm, Jesus is there, mm -hmm. Jesus is present, and he offers hope in the most tumultuous of times. He does, and I think it's through each other that often he does that. Mm -hmm. And that's what I've noticed, I think, with the COVID. As hard as it's been, mm -hmm. I think those lessons of hope and reach, I think that's when Christ like draws us and makes us grow and learn even more is through those hard times. And I really have felt that connection with the whole world, not just my faith, but with everyone. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. but Facebook is one of those things where the little quick blips of what people's thoughts or their encouragements have been that maybe people share and pass along back and forth to each other. And well, those are momentary. Those don't you know, keep us through the entire day or through these nine plus weeks now that we've been under right. lockdown and, and you know, gridlock. But when you come to know who Jesus is as the person of God in the flesh, Emmanuel, it's, it's far more than a Facebook post or mm -hmm. a share or I had somebody text me today, do you need eggs? Uh, as eggs were hard to find for a little while, and we have <laughs> mm -hmm. a big family, so eggs go fast mm -hmm. at our table. <laughs> mm -hmm. But ta toilet paper, eggs, uh, we've had people <laughs> given uh, cash, you know, to help out other folks, so lots of different encouragements and helps that. Right. I've have heard come that meat is now coming to be mm -hmm. a hard item to find. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, no matter the faith, I think uh, naturally people in church settings like to get together um, in gatherings. So I think people may be missing that, mm -hmm. um, being able to congregate. Are you are you able to meet with your members? And uh, because that's probably changed just very recently. Oh yeah, it's it's been challenging for sure. And while text messages or phone calls are nice, the in-person mm -hmm. greeting is is far you know far far better. Definitely. However, when we have to maintain that distance and can't embrace as you may normally mm -hmm, want to mm -hmm. embrace, uh, or sh even just to shake hands where some people aren't accustomed to that at this time and get a little bit worried, the in-person meeting is, is far more encouraging, but God has been so good to give us little blips or opportunities where we were within the 10 on that initial phase of 10 people or less, mm -hmm. keeping social distances. Mm -hmm. And I, I had a few impromptu prayer meetings at church where it just happened to be a few people just stopped by to bring something by the church or to just see if anyone was there. And I had several folks show up at one time where we were still within the restriction. We set up safely, had all the proper guidelines in place and what a great encouragement it was just to be face to face with each other. But Something we found is the real core of that hope is all of us turned our faces not to each other, but to Jesus Christ mm -hmm. for that hope. And mm -hmm. boy, it was, it was wonderful. And those were those early days, but it's gotten better and better and better as these weeks have gone by. So what does your congregation look like now? Are you all back together? And how many are in your right. group? Yeah, we are back together as of two weeks ago, thanks to a uh, pastor up in Ogden, who'd been kind of a watchdog, I would say, for a lot of Christian churches mm -hmm. who were struggling to find the reasoning for 
restaurants, cinemas, gyms, bars, you know, everything else, liquor stores that were uh, essential, but churches were not essential, and where Walmart could be deemed as a safe place, and they could maintain safe guidelines, but that the churches, uh, even the LDS churches in our, in our communities, can't maintain those safe guidelines. And so him pushing forward, mm -hmm. uh, we're actually able to have a meeting a couple of weeks ago okay. with about 10 or 11 pastors from the state who had heard together the good news that uh, Governor Huntsman was going to be bringing down those restrictions from 10 up to 20. And even at that time, we're already passing up to uh, no limit because while we were restricted to 20 at that time, everyone else was opening to no, no number restriction. And so since two weeks ago, our doors have been opened back up for more than, uh, more than 20 now, and mm -hmm. we have about 90 in our total congregation between English and Spanish ministry, and uh, been able to help start a few other churches in the valley too, where those churches are also meeting together again and just greatly encouraged to be hearing each other sing in church, mm -hmm. seeing each other smiling and greeting from a distance at somewhat, you know, somewhat of a point, but to come into the house of God is just a great, great encouragement. Wow. Thanks for live stream. We, we stayed connected for a while, but it's much better to be in person. Yeah, no, so I would agree. We just had a, a baby blessing for one of my granddaughters um, yesterday. And I did notice that unity that came with meeting together in a little bit bigger group oh, yeah. and how we thrive and need that connection with others. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. First Corinthians talks about the church is a body of many members fitly joined together. We're not all an ear and we're not all an eye. We're not all a nose. And the mm -hmm. Bible says if we were a nose, then where is the hearing? If we were all an eye, then where is the smelling? And so the body mm -hmm. fitly joined together finds that unity that, that the church has. Yeah. So there may be those that are feeling very alone in this pandemic mm -hmm. or that might even be angry at God. What, what may, might you tell them? To, for, for more uplifting yeah. <laughs> words. Well, you know, I think as, as we see who Jesus is, he is not a Geppetto of puppet string mastery over, uh, over humankind. Mm -hmm. He has given free will, and as free will is, is governed to all of humanity, um, hardships come, not because he is just out of control and everything is just in a whirling dervish all around us in life, but because life has hardships and it has seasons. Uh, thinking back to you know the, the dust storms of Texas and the depression and uh, influenza way back in the 20s, so many, so many hard, hard times. And yet hope is found not in my circumstances because circumstances make us happy by happenings. Happy birthday on a downer day brings us up for the moment and the sugar high and then we're Debbie Downer again, perhaps. <laughs> Hope there's nobody Debbie watching. <laughs> <laughs> but we can get that quickly on a roller coaster. But in Jesus, he gives us hope every day with so many different things that he tells us in his word. And, uh, you know, I'd be happy to, to give kind of a short little, um, I guess, insight to some hope that he gives us if I, if I yes, have the chance sure, to do yes. that. Yeah, do so. Want me to do that now? Right, yeah. yeah sure. Okay. Well, here's just a great parallel to, I think, um, I've, as I've called it, a storm or a season right now. In Matthew chapter 14, this is just after Jesus had fed uh, 5,000 with a few barley loaves and fish. And if anybody ever sees a sack lunch show up at a large gathering, nobody's expecting, it's going to be a feast tonight. And, you know, <laughs> right. everyone's going to think, well, where, where's the real food? Yeah, where's, where's the mine? rest of the food? <laughs> and yet in that encounter, there were 12 baskets full um, picked up after it was all done. So Jesus had just performed an amazing miracle. And then he sends his disciples out to the sea and he says, I want you to go by boat to the other side. I'm going to send the rest of the crowds away and go up to the mountains to pray. And as he goes away to pray, Jesus being all God, all man, he was not just a good man. He is in fact God man, Emmanuel, God with us. And so he knew the storm they were about to go into. He knew before March 6th what life was going to look like all over this globe, well, Utah, uh, as that was when it rolled out for us, but as it would ripple through the rest of the countries and the world around us. 
He knew these storms were coming, and he sends us out into them. If we had known, we'd had we'd had a rush on the stores far in advance <laughs> to, you know, the toilet paper pandemonium. Yes. Right. Right. Well, he sends them out as they go out. It says here in the in verse number 24 of Matthew 14, the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. That means uh, the wind was coming from all four sides. There was no relief. We get into those positions, and I've seen this on Facebook. Can we do a reset 2020? I want to push the do over button. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Sure. We want to go around it. We want to get over it. We want to go not through it by all means. Right. We'd rather just get on to the other side. When is it going to be normal again? Well, they're in that. And then in verse number 25 at the fourth watch, that's about 3 to 6 a.m. in the morning, Jesus went unto them. So in our hard times, Jesus does come to us. But he does not say, come on, you need me, call for my help. He waits for us to see our need of him. Not just things, but him mm -hmm. in those hard times. Because as he goes to them on the sea, when they saw him walking on the sea, not only is there a storm, but they say, it's a spirit. Now they've got ghosts and storms. It's a double conundrum for them at this moment. And there's fear in verse 26. But Jesus says to them, and here's the words of encouragement for us. Be of good cheer. And then in the middle of this, he says, It is I, be not afraid. So there's nothing to be afraid of when Jesus is with us. I'm getting chills as I say that because <laughs> it's the truth. My Bible is a red letter edition. So every time the red letters are written, these are Jesus' actual words. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this isn't a live book, it's not just an old book, a historical account. The Bible calls it the living word. And as he gives us this, be of good cheer. It's storming from every side. They think there's ghosts. And Jesus says, be of good cheer. Turn your frown upside down. It's I. Be not afraid. And then Peter says in verse 28, this is a very familiar story. If it be thou, Lord, bid me come to thee on the water. Most of us would say, are you an idiot? Don't get out of the boat. Get down in the belly of the boat. Stay where it's safe. Get on a life vest or something. But Jesus encourages faith in the storm. And he says, Peter, come. He doesn't say, hold on, I'll be there in a minute. He encourages getting towards even more tumultuous. On the, the deck of that boat, it was scary enough, but Jesus is beckoning him with Peter's faith, get out on the sea and come to me, because Jesus is where there was safety. For the one of the first and few times we see uh, someone other than Jesus in a miraculous event. And as Peter is walking on the water, he is fine for a few paces, and then he remembers, oh, goodness, <laughs> it's <laughs> Corona 2020, <laughs> and all the pandemonium sits yeah. back, and do I have toilet paper on me? What if there's an emergency out here? <laughs> he panics, and as he begins to seek, sink, the Bible says that Jesus immediately stretched forth his hand and caught him, and then he confronts him. He says, oh, thou of little, little faith, why did you doubt? Yeah. So in this time, nine weeks plus now, it's, it's for us to, to look to if Jesus is truly the God of the Bible and the God of this universe, and we believe that he says we are in his hand and he has us, there is nothing for us to doubt. There is nothing for us to fear. He says, it is I, come. Follow me. Trust me. Let the world fall apart at the seams if it really will, and don't be afraid because I am with you. Uh, the other account where there's a storm and Jesus that in that account is on the boat. They're all freaking out on the deck again. <laughs> and as they're freaking out on the deck, they say, don't you care that we perish? Mm -hmm. And Jesus was down asleep on the pillow in the bottom of the, the boat. And I always say, it's so hard, but we'd much better be off to go down to the belly of the boat and sleep next to Jesus than panic on the deck. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you for offering a pillar of hope in the community and on Studio Chatter tonight. That was a beautiful I, I sure message. Hope it was. Thank, Thank you, you for so much. Me. You. There's more Studio Chatter coming up. Welcome back. What did we learn today, ladies? This was fun. Yeah, it, it was. was fun to be back. It was really nice it to be felt back. Good. I've missed it you guys. It felt really mm -hmm. good. We had a variety of people. We sure did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was good topics. In my yes, everyone. in my mind, I'm like, how am I gonna 
have a scream for you summer <laughs> how are they and i'm not even going there that? guys i just maybe i'll cut down whenever i go to lake pal <laughs> you'll cut down them. when you don't have service that's when you'll cut down i, feel, I really <laughs> wish i could i feel like mine is not even like skimming around on social media and stuff i feel mine like mine either. is just task oriented i don't want my phone actually <laughs> okay I'll be screen free for you. So. Okay, so isn't that interesting? Because mm -hmm. I feel like I'm so technology driven every day. Uh -huh. So that's what I do every day. And then my job revolves around technology. Right. And then the kids now have technology. I mean, you know how long I resisted even this. So, so the Fitbit will now buzz if I get. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's like a party on your yeah, yeah, desk. Yeah, No, oh, just even for, for your text, text messages yes. too. And so I'm like, oh, what? I know. What? So you can set that so it doesn't bother you. Well, I'm gonna. I, I had to do it. I'm like, I cannot be notified at every no, beck and call for people. I don't have my texts or anything. And I even, I did a Fitbit for about a year. Mm -hmm. I, it was just one more thing that I, I just can't add. I think you need to set, set boundaries. You do have to set boundaries. And for me, that's what I'm like, okay, no, I can't do a I, Fitbit. Because I am getting a little obsessed with the numbers now. I'm like, oh, I didn't hit 22,005 <laughs> today. <laughs> so You do not walk no, that much. No, I have much. been doing that much. And that's what I'm saying. I'm becoming a little bit obsessed. But because, and then you, and then you get so critical of yourself because why am I not so fit? All of a sudden, oh, because we have curbside and delivery. <laughs> that is why. But no, it really, it yeah. is so interesting what really fuels you and drives you. And, and so, I, I mean, Jen's fantastic. I'm just thinking about the kids, though, like yeah, how really you, awesome. I love the, her approach is detox and that mm -hmm. she ha actually has something outlined. So maybe, kids, good, good. we're going to mm -hmm. try it. Good. <laughs> or at least cut back. Yes. I think that, that would be helpful. Yeah, it's not like they're super overkill, but yes, I think to we could step it down a little bit. That. Everybody, yeah. And you're probably feeling it because of school ha is so online mm -hmm. right yeah, now. There's so a lot of technology. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I'm kind of happy for those laptops to disappear. Yeah, uh -huh. I bet. And not, I mean, they've been doing fantastic things with them, don't get me wrong, but yeah. maybe to just get them out of sight, out of mind. So let me ask you this. Normally we'd be filming right now and we'd be like, okay, summer's here. <laughs> right? And now we're like, mm. uh, like do you, you like, don't hey, know what you can do. Just had the kids home for nine, ten weeks, which is what kind of feels like we're halfway summer. through. You know, summer. it is super interesting because even some of the things that we thought that we could start looking to for the month of June mm -hmm. have now been canceled. So it it is be, it does become difficult to say what you know what things can we put on our radar that are a reality. Like right. when can we? book a vacation again and feel good about it. Mm -hmm. What do you deem essential? I mean, I if anything, I've really learned how to stretch what's in the pantry, yes. what's in the refrigerator. I mean, I make jokes about DoorDash and certainly we do that. But but really I'm like, okay, we still have this and this and this. So we're eating this. Yeah. Don't yeah. need to go to the mm -hmm, store again. Mm -hmm. yeah. In fact, try and avoid it, really. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. It depends on the day, but you know, sometimes if mommy needs an out, I'll I'll go to Walmart. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. you know, otherwise or, it's it's or really trying to see Yeah, no, we're too well, I, lo I love meeting Pastor Steve. I did, too. That he brought such fun. a peaceful, nice message. Yeah. Yeah, it was really hope-driven, I guess. And I love hearing about other people's faiths. Mm -hmm. It's th just the way he tells the story compared to maybe from my LDS perspective. Right. It's just But the different. connection is still there. And it's, it's so fascinating. I'm like, oh, that was just like a little, oh, uh -huh. I love it. It's yeah. just so fascinating. I did, too. That everyone can be joined together in Christ mm -hmm. and hope and have faith. Right. That we'll, and we'll there's even this. another, you know, pillar, a pillar of uh, hope in the community that somebody, you know, can look to maybe if they are feeling lost or maybe yeah. they just need to hear something positive and uplifting. Mm -hmm. That they're open and mm -hmm. people can go visit them. Yeah. Well, ladies, happy summer. Hey, thank you. Here I don't we know. go. Will it go change much? Go donate some blood, guys. Teddy, go help out. <gasps> I don't know if I can, but I think you <laughs> should. <laughs> I, I did that. So that's there's a great a, challenge, actually. That, that's a good challenge. <laughs> All right. That's another thing that I'm like, yeah, I did that. So on your summer vacation, plans. Natasha. We'll go together. It's, no, it's no. all on you. It's all on me. I, I've done it. Oh, don't you feel bad for me already? <laughs> yeah, a little a bit. A little bit. This could be your out. <laughs> Ooh. Okay, then, maybe, 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 maybe. Okay. We'll let you know next time. Thanks for being here with us. We hope you enjoyed the chatter. Stay safe.